and welcome. I'm Maudile Shafai, so thank you for joining me on View from the Top. In spite of the country's traditional reliance on hydrocarbons, Nigeria's industrial sector is diversified and growing, ranging from food and beverages to building materials and catering to a market of over 170 million people. After a decades-long slump in manufacturing outputs triggered by the scaling up of oil production, especially from the 1970s, the country is working to reverse the trend and enable manufacturing and heavy industry to play a larger role in the economy. The rail sector is the engine room of any economy. Therefore, investments in that sector will have a multiplier effect on other sectors leading to massive direct and indirect job opportunities. Apparently, with this in mind, Dangote Industries has spurred the industrialization of Nigeria and many other African economies through the establishment of integrated cement plants which are geared towards making those countries self-sufficient in cement production. They plan to have cement factories in 16 African and Asian countries. The brain behind all these cement factories and the salt factory and the fertilizer, steel, flour, sugar and oil refinery is Alhaji Aliko Dangote and he's one of my guests on view from the top today. The other is DG Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Remy Ogumefu. Getting an interview with Alaji Aliko Dangote was, as you can imagine, very challenging. First, it was a matter of uh, scheduling, but we eventually scaled that puzzle and got to sit down for a few minutes. The second challenge then became how to pack such a multifaceted life into a few minutes of question and answer on television. A very tall order, I can assure you. So we had to narrow it down and only discuss entrepreneurship and philanthropy. We will take that interview right after this brief biography. Aliko Dangote was born on 10 April 1957. He got a degree in business studies from the Azhar University in Cairo. He established the Dangote Group as a small trading firm in 1977, but today the group has moved from being a trading company to being the largest industrial group in Nigeria and includes Dangote Sugar Refinery, Dangote Cement and Dangote Flour. The company operates in Nigeria and other African countries including Benin, Cameroon, Ghana, South Africa, Togo, Ethiopia, Zambia and Tanzania. Alhaji Dangote served as a director of Jai's Bank PLC, the Transnational Corporation of Nigeria PLC, and was once president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In 2011, Alhaji Dangote was awarded Nigeria's second highest honor, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON, and was named as the Forbes Africa Person of the Year 2014. He has also been recently ranked as one of the 50 most influential persons in the world. Let me start by asking you, what is behind this aggressive expansion across Africa? We know we believe in Africa. We have actually been doing these investments for the last two, three years. And I think when we're announcing the uh, investments, people really didn't believe we we're actually, you know, sinking that kind of cash, you know, across Africa. So um, a lot of them, they are, they are ready, and some of them, they are getting ready. And I believe it is just now that people are realizing that, uh, yes, we've been very aggressive pushing. But it's true, on a moderate, this thing, yes, we are a little bit or moderately aggressive but not extremely aggressive. Extremely aggressive would have actually done much more than what we've been doing. You are operating in many African countries. Is it easier being an entrepreneur in one uh, as opposed to others? They are all okay. They are similar issues or different issues, but they have quite a lot of similarities. And I think, uh, you know, we enjoy it. You know, we enjoy investing in uh, Africa. I'm not saying that it is extremely easy. It's a little bit difficult, but you know these are issues that we can easily, uh, you know, sort out and move. And uh, when you look at the future of Africa, you know, it, it is a greater uh, future. The only thing that we need in Africa to fuel the growth is to have infrastructure. What can African countries do to more broadly uh, encourage entrepreneurs to come in? Well, I think it's to have very good investment uh, terms and conditions, uh, how to attract uh, investment. It doesn't matter. When you say foreign investment, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's from Africa, local also. But if those things are clearly defined, that this is what it is for you to come in and invest, uh, not the one that you will go in and invest 
and then the uh, parliament will go and change the terms of uh, you know the uh, uh, agreement or what you are given we've seen that happen in one or two countries which i think is not the right way of doing things how important is entrepreneurship not just for firms and industries but for the economy of the continent as a whole without entrepreneurs there's no way you can move any country forward you have to have entrepreneurs to be involved Governments are not doing things by themselves today, so you need the entrepreneurs to be able to push and uh, you know be able to uh, you know attract investment and attract more investment because you, well, what you need is maybe one or two people who will come and do the right thing because of the conditions that you've actually laid down, and then they will attract other people. You are regarded as a quintessential entrepreneur running so many businesses at the same time is it luck or skill no it's skill really it's not uh, well luck is there really because you can have the whole skill in this world if you don't have that luck things might not work out and uh, if you have that luck when you do things you will end up uh, calculating that yes you are going to make uh, average return of you know return on your investment and you'll end up even earning much more money than you had anticipated so are entrepreneurs successful because of their own personal qualities or the context in which they sometimes find themselves? Well, you know, entrepreneurs are people who really sit down, do their numbers, and they also do take risk, calculated risk. And you have to have a very big heart. You know, you can be an entrepreneur, but if you have a small heart, you will never ever grow big. So you have to take a big step. Once you take a big step and you are not really scared of doing things and you are sure of what you are doing. I mean, like myself, I don't really do any business that I cannot explain to you when you wake me up from my sleep. I have to explain that process of the business A to Z before I get into anything.